In recent weeks, the Kenyan Generation Z has gained attention across Africa and beyond due to their ongoing protests targeting corruption. These fearless protests have already resulted in the exposure and downfall of corrupt activities within Kenya, causing great concern for Kenyan leaders. Notably, the movement has transcended national borders and is now spreading to other African countries, such as Nigeria. In Nigeria, the Generation Z has announced plans for a 10-day continuous protest this month, aiming to tackle corruption head-on. A defining characteristic of this Generation Z movement is its lack of allegiance to any particular tribe, reflecting a common goal of combating bad governance and corruption. Comrades power. 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 Comrades power. 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 Comrades Ria. Ria. Comrades Zigi Zaga. Zigi Zaga. We want to unequivocally state that we shall remain unbowed. We will not be intimidated by this punitive regime. Sure. We have only one goal. One to goal. ensure we get rid of bad governance and this will happen in my generation. Exactly. When we say Ruto must go, we are not inciting anarchy. We are calling all the people with oppressive or dictatorship tendencies to book. And we say that no matter what it takes, we will fix this nation. Comrades power. 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 Comrades Ria. 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 Viva to the youth of Kenya. Viva. Viva. We say that as a show of goodwill, he should fire and hire accordingly. Exactly. He should follow the constitution. He should employ at the very least 100,000 youth yeah, yeah. and resign from office. Mr. Ruto, if you want to show us a sign of goodwill, kindly reconstitute the IEBC. That is the only way we will believe that we have our best interests at heart. Comrades power. power. We shall not tire. We shall not relent. We shall not give up in pursuing what is our God-given right because we, the people of Kenya, are the sovereign power of this country. Comrades power. power. Comrades Ria. Ria. Comrades Akchu. Akchu. Comrades Ziki Zaka. Ziki Zaka. Meanwhile, Kenyan President William Ruto has responded to the demands of the Kenyan Gen Z by taking significant actions. After three weeks of anti-government protests, President Ruto has made substantial changes, including the removal of budgets for the offices of the First Lady and Second Lady. Additionally, he has dissolved 47 state agencies. President Ruto has also implemented measures such as suspending non-essential travel for government workers, halting the purchase of new cars, and cutting the number of advisors by half. You see, that was quick. The recent changes implemented by President Ruto were once thought to be unattainable before the protests led by Generation Z. Many Africans may not realize that one of the primary demands imposed by the West on African nations is to create multiple opportunities for corruption. This allows money to be siphoned back to the West, while African politicians are unfairly blamed for it. Organizations such as the IMF and World Bank perpetuate this cycle by focusing on the corruption they help foster, effectively diverting attention from their own exploitative actions on the continent. The situation unfolding in Kenya is a clear example of this deception. If William Ruto is only addressing this issue now, why wasn't it tackled from the beginning? The answer lies in the fact that corruption is ingrained in the system. This explains why you seldom find a pro-Western African nation that isn't plagued by rampant corruption. The more aligned a country is with Western interests, the more prevalent the corruption tends to be. Nevertheless, a revolution has begun, and those complicit will undoubtedly seek refuge with their Western backers. Africa rightfully belongs to its impassioned inhabitants. Meanwhile, the Kenyan Gen Z has taken action against what they perceive as corruption and lack of support from various institutions. Following their occupation of the Kenyan parliament, they have now turned their attention to churches, believing that these institutions are not standing up for them. They are particularly critical of the perceived presence of corrupt leaders in these churches, whom they accuse of spreading falsehoods during Sunday services. In one instance, they have even called out the First Lady of Kenya, Rachel Ruto, for reportedly using private expensive jets to bring in profits from the West to pray for Kenya. The Gen Z activists argue that these funds should instead be directed towards helping the people who are suffering in Kenya. To gain further insight into these events, I recommend watching this video. Rachel Ruto, your behavior and character is giving Jezebel. How is it that you want to continue with business as usual when people are conducting funerals, barrios and vigils for the youth that died on the streets? You want to continue as with business as usual, going for fundraisers, using taxpayers' money. 
let's talk about your Jezebeli quiz of inviting foreign prophets to state house and funding foreign prophets who are disgrace even in the countries that they come from using taxpayers' money. Exactly the way Jezebel used to fund the prophets of Baal and Asherah. It is the same exact script. Let's talk about women like you who are described in the book of Amos 4, women of Samaria who would abuse, neglect the poor and ask for more wine at the expense of the poor. Isn't that what you're doing when you're asking for funding for your office? By the way, when you took a private jet to go and invite Benihin to come and pray for problems that you have contributed towards, did you consider that the cost of doing that could alleviate the problems in the village that you come from? In your own backyard, people die of snake bites because antivenom is not readily available. Dispensaries are not readily available. There is teacher shortage in that area. Food and water is a problem. Poor infrastructures in schools is a problem. But you have the funds to give these foreign profits. You have the funds for a private jet. And by the way, your office is unconstitutional. But you didn't know because you are not even familiar with the font with which our constitution is written in. And all this uh, thing about at your office is doing faith diplomacy. For us, faith diplomacy is euphemism for hogwash and high class nonsense. It means nothing. Faith diplomacy does not affect the common mwanainchi. They have bigger problems to think about like Linda Mama. By the way, Kenya stayed for 24 years without a first lady. And in those 24 years, Maziwa Yanyayo was available in schools for kids. That should tell you that Moi was more motherly than you. The recent demonstrations by Generation Z in Kenya signify the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. They are not just about the finance bill. They are a resounding message that the youth are ready to take over leadership bringing fresh perspectives and innovative solutions free from the corruption and tribalism that have plagued previous generations. Equipped with powerful tools like artificial intelligence through platforms like ChatGPT, smartphones, and the internet, Generation Z is leading the way with solutions that transcend corruption and tribalism, matching their global peers in admirable endeavors. Their fresh perspective and technological prowess mark a new cycle of change characterized by integrity, transparency, and sustainable economic growth. This shift in Kenya is about redefining leadership and governance, and older generations can benefit from embracing Generation Z's creativity for beneficial intergenerational teamwork. In today's Kenya, there are three groups, the rulers, the opposition, and Generation Z, who see the first two as one and the same. In conclusion, I would like to share a brief recording from X Space featuring a speech delivered by a member of Kenyan Gen Z. This speech has resonated with the hearts of numerous individuals in Kenya. We have joined together as a generation through a spirit of liberation. We want to liberate ourselves from the chains of tyranny. We want to liberate ourselves from the imperialism in parliament. We want to liberate ourselves from the mockery and the contempt coming from the mouths of politicians. Careless, reckless, useless politicians, heartless, tearless, callous, stone-hearted, cold-hearted, no-hearted. They still our resources every day. They steal our taxes. And when you ask them, they shoot you. They buy bullets. But they can't buy food. They buy tankers. But they can't buy water tanks. Our children are struggling. Our mothers are pained. Our fathers are hopeless. While these callous politicians sit in big hotels 
and even they have hotels in the parliament so that they can eat after vomiting on us then they vomit again and vomit again and when when you ask them why they are vomiting they diarrhea on you through reckless and callous statements they don't care about you they don't care about us they care about nothing they care about their wallets when it is about them they unite they speak in one voice to pass that bill that raises their salary to pass that bill that gives them access to public resources but when it's about you and me they don't sit in the chambers we are only left with the judiciary chambers where we go begging for justice in any case we appreciate your input please consider subscribing liking and sharing we value your feedback so please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below